Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. So I've just been in the lounge unboxing this rather fabulous Go Piano. Why don't we go back in time and let's do the unboxing all over again. So that's recording, I'm gonna put that right in the back just so it doesn't get stuck. Right, okay, we'll go around to the front now and we'll do our little clap test. <sighs> Normally I would do these unboxings at a very rapid pace with a lot of edits to keep the tempo up, but today I thought we could just relax, do a slower pace and I'll chat to you about anything that comes to mind whilst we're doing the unboxing. So let's get started. This is the Go Piano then. Let's take a look at the box. Let's read some of the highlight features. Tripod is a bit high here, but I think it will be okay. I'm a bit breathless as well, because I've just come in from a run. Right, let's see what we have to say about this then. So this is the Roland Go Colon Piano. Compo compact and affordable with premium piano sound and authentic full-size keys. Looking at the picture here, it does appear to be full-size keys, which is really great. Sometimes the keys tend to be a little bit shorter and narrower on some of the competitors and other keyboards from Roland as well, so it will be interesting to see how those feel. Educational tools built in to maximise learning and enjoyment. Excellent, excellent. I'll be trying those out too. Maybe we'll get my son to do a couple of lessons together with the Roland app. That might be fun. Connect wirelessly to interactive music and training apps via Bluetooth. That's something we'll try out. Wide variety of instrument sounds like electric piano, synths and vintage organ with 128 voice polyphony. 128 voice is really good for an instrument like this. And it's based apparently on the JV and XV technology. So the sound should be pretty good. Rugged and lightweight. Runs on batteries, six AAs and included AC adapter. So the rugged part, I don't have very high expectations for, for an instrument in this price class anyway, but we'll uh, put it to the test and see what we think. Play anytime with built-in speakers, that's cool, or headphones. I do like built-in speakers on my keyboards. Go 61P, referring to the fact that it does have 61 keys. This is a bit interesting. It does say that it supports general MIDI 2 which would indicate that there are hundreds of different sounds on this, but I'm not sure that's the case, but we'll try that out when we do the proper review. And this thing does allow you to connect to Bluetooth, the keyboard to your phone or any other device via Bluetooth. And that allows you to use the music apps when you're playing it, but also you can connect your iPhone or whatever phone you have to the Roland here and use this as a Bluetooth speaker, which I think is pretty cool. A lot of people might have these set up in their kitchen or their bedroom or living room, and then it's really convenient to be able to stream your music to it, assuming that the speakers sound any good. That's another thing we'll test in the review. Okay, let's start the unboxing, and I will tell you a little bit about why I wanted one of these to begin with. Some of you will surely be wondering about that. I do have very good reasons and a need for a piano keyboard just like this one. No sticky tape to cut, this is good. Was there any other info on the other side, by the way? They're really hyping this Bluetooth experience, aren't they? There's something else here that's being showcased. Let's see what that is. Here we go. Oh, interesting. Three months free piano lessons included. It's a picture of an iPad app there as well, so we'll have to try those out. That'll be fun to test. As you may know, there's also a Go Keys. I thought it was called the Go Synth, but it's called the Go Keys, which is more of a synthesizer version of this as well. This one is primarily piano. But the Go, T Go Keys is a synthesizer slash arranger, which is quite interesting. I'd like to try one as well. It's got very easy to use arranger features. I mean, if you buy a real arranger keyboard from Yamaha, a traditional one anyway, you still need to know how to play chords to get it to sound good. 
But what they've done with the Go keys is to assign interesting loops to various parts of the keyboard. So even a complete beginner can get something that sounds quite musical. And I'm led to believe that the styles that they're using there are quite contemporary as well. Which is not always the case with your arrangers, is it? They do sound a bit cheesy perhaps sometimes. So maybe we'll try one of those ones in the future as well. But today it's all about this one, the Go Piano. Are we the right way up? Oh, music stand. Always like that. And I'll tell you in a second why we need one of these on the channel. Is this the manual here? Something stuck here at the top with some tape. That's just the, just the manual there, I'm led to believe. Let's get rid of the box. Okay, I need to keep this one in very nice new condition. Perhaps I should explain that this is on loan to me from the very nice people at the Roland Sweden headquarters. Just a 20 minute drive from where I live, so it's absolutely perfect. I have a nice relationship with the marketing guys over there and the product specialists. So when I said what kind of keyboard I was looking at or looking to get, they were very helpful and provided one for me to try out for a few months. So thank you very much to Roland Sferia. So I'm actually a little bit wheezy today. I hope that's not too much of a bother. It's been a lovely summer's day, but I think I'm suffering from a little bit of hay fever. So somewhat wheezy. And that's upside down, typical. Today is in the past. As you're watching this, it's in the future. But today I've just seen Spain knock out Russia on the penalty kicks in the World Cup. So by the time you watch this, the World Cup is probably going to be over. This is a super compact, nice unit. I like, like what I'm seeing here. And my prediction then for the winner of the World Cup, let's see if I can get this right, is either Croatia or Sweden. That's what I'm betting on. Let's see if I was right by the time this video is released. So yeah, really liking the compactness of this. I didn't want 88 keys for this purpose because that would just be too much for what I'm going to be using it for. The trouble is with 88s is they do take a lot of space and in my small little studio slash spare room there's not a lot of space for me to have all the recording equipment, uh, myself, the tripod, the cameras and a big 88 note keyboard. This would be absolutely perfect I think and I like the fact there's no wasted space on the ends. Let's open this one up. You guys are probably screaming at me on the video because you want to see a little bit more of it. It's always lovely to unbox some new gear, isn't it? Even if it's on loan to you and even if it's budget, lower end equipment like this, I don't really care. It's still very exciting, I think. I'm excited about this instrument and I know many of you are as well. Look at that! That's absolutely splendid! Wow! The keys are pretty nice for something in this price range. What I'm really happy to see is that the... Let me just give you another camera angle here so you can really see this for yourselves. I keep bumping my head on the lamp here as well, which is super annoying. Okay. Okay, what's super nice about this is that the keys are the proper length. None of this shorter keys like you get on some other instruments in this price class. Often they're like this long, but now we have proper length keys and the proper width as well. And a very nice feel. Yes, they are light weighted, but the amount of travel is really nice and the resistance is really nice and the feeling when it bottoms out is nice as well. Yeah, really liking that. 
Look, I can play the black keys at the top as well, which is one of my pet peeves. So I can play more jazzy classical chords where you do need to put your fingers at the top of the keys. This one works fine for that. We've even got a nice little red felt there as well, just to set it off. Cool, yes, very impressed. So let's get rid of this bit of foam and I'll give you guys a closer look. Okay, I kid you not, this thing has a really good feeling keyboard. This would be really nice to use as a MIDI controller, although I do not have any pitch bend or mod wheels, which is a bit of a shame, but that's not the intended purpose of this anyway. Interesting to note, it is a keyboard, 61 key keyboard that finishes on a C and also ends on a C. That's a bit unusual, they normally go from E to E. But I quite like that, it might be a bit more friendly for a beginner perhaps. Let's just scan up, see what we have. No physical buttons apart from the on off button, these are all flush to the surface. Not sure how they're going to work, we'll try that in a minute. Go piano. I've got to say it's a pretty nice looking thing as well. I wouldn't be ashamed to have this sitting as a piece of furniture in one of my rooms. Not at all, they've done a pretty nice design. Let's have a little check and see how rugged this feels then. The acid test. Okay, I do not have any high expectations. I'm not sure what the price is for this. It's 250 bucks, maybe 300 buck bucks. I'll put the price in at the bottom there for you. So I don't have any massive expectations for it to be rugged and built for gigs and built for the road and stuff, but uh, let's take a little look, shall we? Obviously all plastic. Okay, you can see it's all got these sections here to give it some rigidity. This is where the batteries go. Yep, nice and tidy. A little bit flexy on the top, as you might expect, but it's neither fit and finish is pretty good. It doesn't creak or anything like that. And as I play, it feels sturdy as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. This is not a cheap feeling keyboard, not really. Even though it is cheap, it does feel quite nice. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in now, see what happens. There's the AC. Must be nine volts if it's six AA batteries, I guess. We have a connector at the back there. I'm just scr scrabbling around here for the for the power. Sorry about the racket. And let's fire this up. Okay, obviously we haven't read the manual yet, but I can, oh! Like the clicking noise when you select a sound. Let's zoom out a little bit. Go ground. Okay, different piano sounds. It seems to be the same piano sound, even though even if I press it lots of times. Vintage EP, full draw bar organ, jazz scat. <laughs> Can we choose? Okay, different. Um, a bit of a Roland classic, isn't it? These jazz scats. They always seem to feature them strings. The speakers are good. You're not really going to be able to tell over my lav mic, but that sounds okay to me. Let's go to the piano sounds. Very nice. European, piano forte, bright grand. Go grand two, you see in the display, let me show you. Grand two, concert, concert grand, concert grand. Mellow grand, honky tonk. 
the speakers are sounding really full. Not sure how they've accomplished that because they're pretty small, but they're doing a nice job of filling up my rather large room with sound. Yeah. Grand plus strings. Grand plus pad. And really nice reverb as well, I can tell you that. Harpsichords. Is that the final one? Yeah. What's the roads like? Hmm. That's good. I'm feeling inspired to jam a little bit. Now you're not going to get good sound quality here. I will connect it to the computer a little bit later. Well, that'll be a separate video. This is just the unboxing. So you can kind of get a feel for what the sound quality is like. I'm loving this form. What did you say? The form factor. It's so compact. No unnecessary wasted space on the left or the right. It's as, as compact as can be. And I'm having trouble talking today. <laughs> volume controls. Twenty is the max. What else do we have? Phase EP. Yeah, we're not getting massively deep bass, of course, from the speakers, but they are doing a great job. It's nice not to have to connect it to an amplifier or anything if you just want to jam with your friends. Tiny bit of distortion when we have it on 20. The keys are really great. They really are good. Whirly. Cheesy DX7 type sound, but that's pretty nice. Oh, oh, D50 Fantasia, guys, how about that? Let's have a listen. Another nice thing about the built-in speakers is that as you're playing, you can hear the keys vibrating un underneath your fingertips. Which is, of course, the sensation you get from a real piano. So that's another nice thing about having speakers built in as you do get that feeling, that vibration. That's a nice sound, that is. Clav. top of that category, a couple of organs here. Yeah, that's okay for now. I'm not going to demo any more of the sounds. We're going to save that for a separate video. And likewise, for some of these other features, I haven't read the manual. We need to figure out how to use those, but that'll be the topic of a separate video as well. This was just the unboxing. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this. It's exactly what I needed, and let me explain a little back, a bit about what I want to use this piano for then. In the autumn I want to do more videos that are about 
giving value to the viewer that watches them. I'd like to do more tutorials, song breakdowns, lessons, music theory, playing techniques, that kind of thing. And I was very thoughtful about what kind of keyboard would be most appropriate for those kind of videos. Now I have plenty of MIDI controllers, as you know. But that's really boring. They don't look very exciting or inspiring on a video. And these videos will be targeted mainly at the beginners and the intermediate players. And as I said, I don't have space for 88s and most pianos are 88 keys. This was one of the very few ones I could find with 61 or less than 88. I could have used a synthesizer, but they look a bit complicated and distracting. I could have used a keyboard like the, I could have used my Electro for example, that's got 73 keys. But I really wanted to avoid using expensive looking keyboards for these videos or synthesizers with lots of sliders, buttons and knobs that might look complicated or somewhat intimidating to a beginner. You see, I don't want to give the impression that you need to spend lots of money to get started. I didn't want to sort of demonstrate or give the impression of a high barrier of entry if you want to start playing music well. So when I found this on Roland's website, I thought it would be absolutely perfect. It even says piano on the top here and piano on the bottom. And it's the perfect size. I'll be able to get these in my lessons and tutorial videos. Not sure exactly what kind of lessons we'll be making in the autumn. I've got a few ideas, so stay tuned. and Let's see where we can take the channel. It'll be a bit of a new direction, maybe less of me just doing performances and a little bit more videos that give a lot of value to the people that watch them. If we're going to go to all the trouble of making these videos, I want them to benefit you as the viewer so that you really feel it was worthwhile watching. <laughs> it sounds good. The sounds are really good. And you're not hearing them in the best quality now. It's just coming through my lav mic here into the camera. Actually, it's going into my Zoom recorder here in the pocket. But we'll do a proper review and see if we can figure out, is this the best keyboard for a beginner? That's going to be the title of the video, I think. But our unboxing mission is accomplished. I'm very glad we got that done because now I can start using this to make some of my tutorials and fun lesson videos that are coming later on in the autumn. about to go back into the other room and we forgot to show this and I'm always happy to see one of these included with a synthesizer or keyboard it is of course a music stand the only ever keyboard I've had with music stands is my PSR S970 the Yamaha DX7 and this one now let's see how does this one slot in then there we go Oh, awesome! Let me show you that. Yes, I know I'm easily excited, but that, I think, is a very nice music stand. Okay, I'm going to go into the other room now and shoot the introduction. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing and we'll be seeing more of the Go Piano on the channel in the future. Perhaps even the Go Keys, if you guys are interested. Before we close out then, just four short announcements, four short reminders I want to make. 
before we go. The first one is that I have a Discord chat server. There's a free invite in the description and this, this is the best place to hang out with me and other fans of the channel. We can chat to each other and even do voice chat with each other as well. It's going to be really cool. That's a fast growing community and I'd love you to be part of it. The second thing is that I've just started using my Twitter account. So if you want to help me out and see what I'm up to and see the rubbish that I'm tweeting, then go ahead and follow me there. That would be much appreciated. Thirdly, as you probably know, but here's a reminder, I have a band camp page where I upload albums with all the music from the channel and you can purchase those for five dollars each. And that's a really great way for you to support the channel. So far there's three albums there but I've got another three to come out later in the summer so keep an eye on that. And the fourth thing then is another way to support me if you want to is to become a patron. It costs just one dollar per month and I offer some really nice rewards now. I've been investing a lot in my patron community and once you sign up you get free albums, free music, there's a podcast and we share our music with each other, all, all sorts of cool stuff for just one dollar. Okay guys that's enough of my promos, let's end the video now. Thank you very much for watching, as always thanks for subscribing, liking, sharing, I'll see you again soon, have a great summer, cheerio!